Hello, everyone, once again, and welcome back to Ask the Brawn Color Assistance. This is our 13th of our webinar series that we've had today, and this will actually be the third of four assistance trainings. Today, we're going to be covering soft boxes and specialty light shapers. But before we get into that, I do have a couple pieces of housekeeping I want to bring up. First, if it's your first time joining us, welcome. If it is not your first time joining us, welcome back. Definitely great to, to have you here, and thanks for coming in. Uh, also, as we announced on the last webinar last month, in September, the, uh, the wonderful Swiss photographer Urs Retscher is going to be coming to the United States uh, to be doing some brawn color teaching for everybody. Uh, we have events in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Salt Lake City, Atlanta, Chicago, and New York. If you have not checked your spot already, please make sure to do so. I am actually sending the link into the sticky chat right now so that you can go and uh, learn for yourself and see what we can go and see what we can all do together. Uh, as always, if you uh, like what we're doing here, like, follow, share, subscribe, Brawn Color USA on all the things, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, so uh, before we get rolling into everyone here, I want to introduce my co-host for today, Francis Westfield. Francis is a longtime photo assistant and digital technician to many legendary New York City-based photographers. Francis estimates that he has been on over 4,000 pro shoot days throughout his 40 years in the industry. Now, as Bron Colors technical sales manager here in the U.S., Francis likes to offer many of his years of onset experience to offer quality products and solutions to pro photographers and studios. So without further ado, Francis. Oh, thank you, Blake. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, I hope you get a lot out of this. And, um, you know, we, uh, we're looking forward to it. So at, at the end, we're going to have questions, right, Blake? So we'll be able to answer anything for you. Uh, in specifics. Okay. Absolutely. And as we go forward, please make use of that Q&A button or uh, in the chat, prefer the Q&A button. Uh, we'll be able to get everything up and running and uh, get those questions answered for you. Uh, so uh, if you have attended the last two of the ass assistance trainings and the uh, Ask the Bron Color Assistance like we're doing here, you'll know that we're taking things and doing them a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of video content for you. And uh, in between these two pieces of video, we'll have the Q&A sessions open and we'll go from there. So without further ado, uh, we're going to back away for a minute and we will be back in a little bit. So let's talk about the hard metal reflectors from Braun Color and some of the differences in them and what they can do and what uh, domes, uh, either the clear or the frost, that you would use with these. Uh, we make everything from our popular P70 reflector, the PAR reflector, the P65, another P70, this is the conical snoot, and we have the beauty dish with its sock uh, over here on that one. Um, we have grids for these in both uh, sizes with the P65 and the P70. And this is the 5-in-1 grid, which I'll show you in just a minute. So uh, I'd like to show you basically what I did before was taking the reflector off. Um, holding the reflector steady, bringing the tab to its stopping point, whether it's all the way around or almost 360 degrees. Then with your finger on the mechani locking mechanism, I take it off nice and straight off the light. Being very careful that you don't tip it and hit the dome. So you want to be very careful of that, especially when you're using a soft box, but we'll talk about that when we talk about soft boxes. So that goes on like that. The conical snoot is pretty much the same thing. It's a little hot right now, so I'd actually let it cool down before I go touching it, or I get a pair of gloves on that. Uh, that's one of them that gets a little hot because you are keeping the heat in there. Um, then another piece, 70 over here, this is the PAR reflector. And in the PAR reflector, you're gonna notice, I'll turn the model light off for a second at the light itself, that you have the frosted dome in here instead of the clear dome. And that's because this high polished metal reflector, I wanna take it off and show you. This high polished metal reflector is like a mirror finish. Can you see that? And it's going to reflect the actual light source. So you don't want that light source as a small bulb. You might even get a hot spot 
or I'm sorry, a dark spot in the middle of your uh, lighting, using the matte dome will reflect just that light source and it'll be nice and even. And this PAR reflector will give you a high concentrated uh, area of light. I'm actually using it on the Pulse OG. And if you brought it out, it would spot it. It would um, flood it. But I'm going to keep it in the spotted position because that's really what the design for this is. Okay, I'm going to put that back on. Turn it. Okay. Very good. And I'll turn the model light back on. Okay. So, on the P65, there are these larger grids. We make them in three sizes. And they simply just snap into place. Like that. P70 reflector has these grids and again snaps right into place. So using the grid it will narrow the beam of light down to a certain degrees so you can keep the light um, focused in a uh, smaller uh, tighter pattern. The beauty dish is also a hard metal reflector uh, but it but it's designed to give you a very soft effect on it. I actually have the diffusion sock on front of it. Let me take it off before I show you. I'll take off the whole beauty dish. And take it off very carefully. And then I'll take the sock off. There is a diffuser here. And then a white pebbled finish in here, like this. Um, something like the beauty dish might be a little bit... Um, awkward to put on, especially at a height like this. So I might want to take the head off, put it on a table, and then put the head into this. Um, let me demonstrate it by actually holding it, because I don't want to actually put it on the floor right now. So I'll just do it like this. And with the small tab at 12 o'clock, I'm going to then, okay. And that might just be a little bit more convenient than actually trying to put it on in that higher position. So if you're unsure about it, take safety into mind and do that. So Braun Color makes something that nobody else has. It's a UV adapter and it blocks out all of the visible light and only admits UV on the 300 to 315 nanometer range. It is quite remarkable if you want to go shoot something very special like day glow paints, or you could use this in a museum application for shooting cultural heritage uh, items, such as uh, fine manuscripts or paintings where you need to see under layers of paint and things like that. It's really very cool. Um, it has the same bayonet mount. It's a very dark filter, so having a model light on is not even going to be uh, necessary. I'm going to actually turn my model light off on this to make sure it's off. Uh, I'll take off my reflector, the P70, P70 that I have here right now, and I'll put this on, but before I put this on, I'm going to want to take off this dome. I'll make sure it's cool to the touch, and just to play it safe, I'm going to unplug the head, so there's no chance of any kind of mishap happening. I'll take my UV dome, bring the black line to 12 o'clock, and just wiggle it off. Put it down very carefully. And then I'll put on the UV dome. So taking off the UV dome, because this cuts UV light, now we want to actually add and photograph under UV light. Aside from these hard metal reflectors and the UV attachment, Broncolor makes a lot of other specialty type reflectors. Uh, we have a fluter, which is a large Fresnel that can focus in uh, in, in, in a, uh, a very nice uh, old school type uh, Hollywood uh, photography fashion. Well, we make the optical spot, which is a focusable light, which you can use precise patterns in gobos that you can put in there and focus in on and, and really focus the light down to a very uh, fine uh, detail. Uh, we make a light pipe, which is a uh, light that goes out basically in a long tube and can be hidden 
in a very uh, inconspicuous spot in, uh, let's say, the floor of a car or behind a couch in an interior shot and things like that. We make the balloon, which is a large uh, white acrylic ball, uh, which can illuminate a room in, in, in an interesting way. So if you have a need for some kind of unique specialty light shaper, I'm sure that Braun Color can uh, accommodate you and we can find something that uh, will meet your needs. All right, perfect. So that was the first of our two videos that we have today. Uh, definitely, of course, in the chat, if you were watching, we do have Dan, who was giving us some great information as well in regards to some of the interesting options that we have. Uh, and if you have not seen it already, I just put into the sticky on the chat the link to the special reflectors page where you can actually see more of these reflectors sort of in person and, and get some information about them. Um, while we were in the middle of that video segment, I did get a question from the chat. Uh, Francis, this one might be right up your alley as well. Uh, when we are swapping domes, are there any loss of, uh, of light between the two domes? Uh, you know, I've never technically measured it, but it's, it's not, it can't be much. It could be maybe a tenth or two tenths of a stop, um, and depending on what power level you're at. So I, I don't, I think if you're at a high power level uh, output, I don't think you're going to see much more than two tenths of a stop. All right. Awesome. Well, test it. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, give a moment for some, any more chats, any more questions to come through before we go to video segment number two. And it looks like uh, we are getting some information here as well that uh, all the domes are doing is just creating a harder or a softer light. There is no loss in, uh, in output there. So definitely nothing to worry about. Um, all right. I guess if there are no additional questions, we will roll into video two and uh, go to our next piece. Let's talk today about Broncolor soft boxes and Broncolor octaboxes. Uh, we make a range from 60 by 60 up to uh, 120 by 180 centimeters. That's basically two by two up to four by six feet. Uh, we have some unique modifiers in there that I'll show you. Uh, and uh, we work with these speed rings. The material is really quite exceptional on Broncolor. The outside material is a heavy duty uh, cloth material that's really durable. The inside is a very nice silver pebbled finish on most of these. And they work with the speed ring here that has color-coded um, adapters for all the different octaboxes and softboxes that we make. So the rods on this are um, black on this 60 by 60. So I'm going to insert these into the black dot. I'm going to then take the opposite one and go opposite there, and then I'm gonna get the other sides. And very, very simple. I've assembled this softbox. I already have the baffle in there. So I'm gonna pull off my front diffuser just a little bit and show you that. The baffle is used to even diffuse the light even more, so you get an even illumination across the whole box itself. There's a larger Velcro strip up here that if you want to use the soft grid, uh, affectionately known as the egg crate, to narrow the beam of light, that can be put on here as well. We make lots of different options in that. All right, and then now that I have this assembled, and I'll tighten up the Velcro flaps on the back here, uh, I could easily take this small soft box and attach it to my light on this, but I'd like to show you a little bit of a safer way to do this, especially with the larger boxes or the strip banks. Just take your head. You have this on a clean um, surface, like a table or a clean floor or on the seamless itself. You just put this down at the 12 o'clock position, spin it till it's ready, and there you go. So that's a safer way to put this on the box. Okay. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. Okay, and I'd like to show you something with the 120 by 180 softbox. I'm gonna bring it up here a little bit. 
the softbox this big, I like to leave it on a flat surface and mount the light to the softbox. It's just a safer way to do this. I could possibly get it up there, but you always have the chance of knocking into the flash dome, uh, the cover dome, and or the tube and breaking it. So it's a safer way to do this by just taking the head here and in the 12 o'clock position, the smaller tab, I'm gonna put this up like that, okay? I'm gonna bring my stand over a little bit. And I'm gonna mount this and then show you something unique about this modifier and the way we have it set up. Okay, Brown Color makes uh, accessories for these modifiers. You spin it to it's nice and straight. And this is called the edge mask. And the edge mask is simply an opaque area in the center of the softbox on the diffuser. So we changed out the diffuser with the edge mask diffuser. And you can then, pardon me, I'll turn the model light on, shoot against this, in the opaque area, and you can put a person there, you can put a, project, uh, a product there, or anything, and then you're going to get a rim light around the sides or the edge of your product. And it's rather nice and rather easy to work with. We make this in four different sizes. So that's the edge mask. We also make a strip mask, which is exactly the opposite of that, opaque around a small strip going down the center of it. OK, perfect. So we are back once again. So. Let me get that video out of the way. Uh, we did have a couple of questions that have come through that uh, we're happy to kind of answer here. Uh, one of which from James in the chat asks about, uh, will Unilights and Pico lights mount on a floor stand and be able to shoot straight up? Uh, I noticed that when using the Mobi LED heads, they won't because of the, uh, the way that the handle is designed. Um, I actually have off camera here, one of my Unilights that I use in studio. And if you can see there, the mounting area does give you enough clearance. Just watch out with that, uh, that cable there. Depending on how you've got things oriented, it may be a little bit in the way. But I have not had any problems with mounting them in a, in a vertical position as well. So no issues there. I believe the Pico light will do the same. And uh, Dan in the chat here uh, says, actually, just what is on my mind as well. I absolutely love the edge mask. I am an edge mask fan as well. Uh, I don't have it on during my uh, backdrop here today. But uh, usually, of course, if you've tuned in before, you've seen that as well. Uh, question in the chat here. Uh, are softbox useful with continuous LED lamps? Francis, do you want to take that one? Absolutely. Our um, F-160 LED can definitely be used in, in one of the um, uh, uh, soft boxes. No problem. Uh, those LEDs have, the Broncolor LEDs have the same bayonet mount that all of our other lights, uh, except for the Pico, have. So, yes, absolutely. All right. Awesome. Okay, so uh, just still monitoring the chat here, seeing if there's any questions that we have coming through. Uh, looks like we have quite the international audience today. I'm seeing uh, Denmark. I'm seeing, uh, looks like Mexico as well. So definitely seeing a bunch of people from all around the world. So thanks for joining us today. All right. And uh, one uh, other question kind of here from the chat. A uh, little birdie told me, Francis, that you had been working with uh, the UV adapter a little bit earlier last week. Do you want to talk about that a little bit and give Absolutely. the folks some information? Absolutely. I'd love to. Um, it's, still in the, in the, uh, it's still in the early stages right now, so I really can't say the exact client, but I can say it was a government institution. And um, we were photographing some uh, very very old, almost 200 year old um, artifacts uh, with UV. And uh, what you can't see 
with the visible with uh, visible light and the naked eye, uh, when we're using v UV strobes um, with those adapters, uh, and we happen to use it with uh, Cirrus L um, battery operated mono lights, uh, we showed up things that were old restorations, um, cigar uh, cigar scars on uh, on the act. Uh, on the artifact that maybe were done in like the 1800s, um, and uh, and and other damage that was done to these to these uh, you know priceless artifacts at uh, at the uh, at a government institution, um, and what it's going to help with is a, is making a map of what's there that uh, restorers can come into work with. Now the great part about using UV and strobes is. Um, in many places, you can't uh, you can't blacken out the whole area that we were in because and then set up normal UV lights that you would see like at a party or something like that, because um, it's just not it's just not feasible. But using UV strobes, uh, UV adapters on the uh, Cirrus L's uh, 800s, uh, they were able to, you know, shoot instantly uh, with normal ambient light around and uh the question came up is well will this uv light damage these artifacts and the the answer is no because you're talking about you know a very short burst of energy from the strobe the uv exposure is so minimal it's just not gonna it's not gonna affect anything so having that in in the conditions we were in was just remarkable and we saw things that were just uh, amazing. Scratches, dents, uh, stains, uh, things that just uh, couldn't be, uh, you know, kind of unimaginable that would happen to these uh, these these priceless artifacts at the uh, at a government institution. So wonderful. Well, hey, that, that's definitely I like I like to see some interesting use cases across the way, and that is definitely one that uh, falls within a very interesting use case for sure. Um, I think we'll be a story on that uh, down the road, uh, Blake, and, um, you know, keep an eye out for it, everybody. It, it will be interesting. Absolutely. Uh, to kind of piggyback on that, Terry in the chat was asking if we can demo that UV dome to see the effects. Uh, unfortunately, Terry, for how we've got things set up here in the webinar process, uh, that would be something we don't really have a good way to demonstrate at the moment, uh, especially when we're talking about how that light particularly works with the visible spectrum. Um, but definitely we do have some additional stuff on our website and uh, we'd like to have you check that out. And once we have some more uh, demos that we can do to make things interesting, we're happy to share as well. Um, and also uh, Jens in the chat, can we see a photo where the edge mask is used? Um, I wanna actually di direct you to a webinar we did uh, either earlier this year or late last year, we actually did an entire webinar all about the edge mask uh, where we actually showed some demos and how to, how to work with those as well. Uh, highly would recommend checking that out for some more information as well. Okay. And we'll go back to the chat here. Uh, looks like Terry as well uh, had mentioned that in the past, a library would not allow me to use strobes to photograph pages and books because of the UV radiation. Uh, Francis, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, that as well from, you know, why looking at the, uh, the UV dome is going to be a better option than uh, just a bare flash itself? Uh, do you mean a bare UV light that you would have to... Uh that you'd have to blacken out the room with? Is that what you're talking about, Blake? Uh, more just in terms of how working with a strobe with the UV attachment actually produces less additional UV light because it's only, yeah, I'll, I'll let you go from there. Yeah, it, it's only, exactly, Blake. It's only a fraction of a second that the UV is exposed to the artifact. So, um, you're, you know, you're, you're actually... Uh, if you went the conventional way of shooting UV in, in, let's say, the old days where you had to black out the room, you had to put the UV lights up, uh, you can't have any other ambient light, and only UV light is hitting this artifact, which, yes, could cause damage to the artifact. It actually can cause even damage to your eyes if you're looking at it. Uh, so with the strobe, you're only talking about, you know, one burst of energy, one short burst of energy 
Uh, it's minimal at that because the UV attachment we have cuts the light down by something like five stops anyway. And it's, it's minimal. Um, when we were shooting this last project, um, you could barely see with the vis your visible eye, your naked eye, the uh, light flashing out onto the, uh, onto the artifacts. So it's, it's, it's very minimal when you're using strobe. So it's actually um, more conducive to, to work with something like that. You're, you're not going to be hurting the artifact um, in, 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 as you conventionally think that how UV would affect it and, um, and damage it. It just, it just won't. So I understand the uh, library shut you down, uh, Terry, but um, this is something maybe uh, you can explain to them or down the road. And if you'd like to talk offline about that, I'd be certainly happy to. Wonderful. All right. Uh, any other questions do we have from the chat so far? Uh, looks like that is, let me see here. Looks like, yeah, looks like nothing, nothing really new is quite coming in for the moment. So what I'd like to do is uh, let's start sort of taking things into or in for a landing here. Uh, Want to once again talk about some of the uh, the masterclass series that we are going to be putting on with with Earth. Uh, Francis, you're going to be part of that masterclass. Uh, so, what would you like to say to the folks to kind of help uh, help everybody along and and uh, inspire them to come out and come out and see us? Well, I've known Oris Rucker for twenty uh, over twenty years right now now, and he is amazing. It's it's just what his knowledge base is uh, is is just un, unfathomable. So uh, he works a lot with Carl Taylor in in the UK. Uh, he's been at Brown Color over twenty something years now, um, and I've learned so much from him in the past. When I visited Brown Color uh, way back when, um, I was just in awe of Oris. Uh, so if you really want to learn what lighting is all about, um, you, you know. Definitely come to this. Uh, Orz's book on lighting, where he shoots the, uh, uh, I think it's 50 scenarios using just an egg. I mean, it's so classic. It's so amazing. I refer to it all the time. Um, and, and that's on our website, right, Blake? We can, we can share that, right? So, um, you know, if you want to get a, get a hint of what Orz is going to do and just a taste of it, go, go look at that, look at that uh, ebook that he's got. It's quite amazing. And, uh, I tell you, when you, you're not going to regret taking Orz's class. So hope to see you there. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I know that I put some information in the sticky, but I want to go ahead as well and send this nice little offer out. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, we are in September going to be in six cities across the U.S., Los Angeles, San Francisco, Salt Lake City, Atlanta, Chicago, and New York City. Uh, and right now, until the end of the day on Friday, I believe. We are still in the early bird ticket area, so you definitely do have the ability to save a good bit of money when you register early. Uh, definitely want to make sure that you get in, and, and we do have some limited spots to make this happen. So if you are interested, if you do want to learn from one of the, uh, the, the best in lighting that I've ever worked with, that I've ever spoken to, this is definitely a, a great place to be and a great place to, uh, to look at. So with that, I'm going to kind of look one more time and see if there are any other questions that have come through. Uh, looks like uh, Gary had a question. No love for Texas on that tour. Uh, at this time, Gary, unfortunately, yeah, we, we did not have the ability to, uh, to put everything into play. Uh, of course, you know, we only had Earth for a limited amount of time while he was able to come over from Switzerland. So we did our best to uh, bring everybody together as much as possible. But definitely let us know. Uh, this is not going to be the last one of these that will ever happen. And uh, for sure, we will see what we can do to, uh, to get Texas on for the next one. Gary, come up to Atlanta, please. Yeah, what, what he said, only coming from me. So, all right. Well, uh, with that... We'll uh, keep this one a little bit shorter for everybody. Thanks once again for everybody for joining us. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, uh, Brian asked question, how would you use the UV strobes for taking pictures of models? Okay, good question. Um, well, the UV is a specialty light. So I would ask first, 
what is your purpose? Uh, we did recently a great, um, uh, a great project in conjunction with Fuji Film, uh, where we had a model and they put day glow makeup on her and photographed her under UV light. It, and it was amazing. I mean, it was just, you know, uh, quite unique, uh, out of this world kind of uh, effect. Um, but it was specifically, you know, you saw the model's face, um, you know, uh, you know, fluorescing um, uh, because of the makeup. Um, if you wanted to, you could also use a combination of UV light and uh, normal strobe, uh, strobe light 5600K. Uh, that would be like a mix of things, but uh, also. Um, and also if UV is used under um, a black and white situation, uh, let's say you're photographing uh, white shirts, uh, the UV is going to make the white shirt fluoresce if it's the proper material. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're a shirt company, if you're photographing for a shirt company and you're on a white background and you want that shirt to pop up uh, using your normal lights plus the UV to fluoresce the white shirt could be. But that is a black and white uh, monochromatic situation that is going to work best in. If you use any color, it's going to go an off type of, uh, all the others are going to go an off type of color. Uh, the white shirt will stay white, but um, things will just look a little weird. So, but yep. um, there's many ways, many applications for UV. It's uh, it's quite unique, and uh, again, we are the only ones who make a UV attachment like that, uh, bronze color. So, um, you know, if you have a need for it, absolutely, we can, and we can talk about it. If anybody wants to talk about it, me or Blake or Dan, you now get in touch with us. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so, uh, any any final thoughts before we take this plane in for a landing, everybody? I'll give the chat just a moment to catch up. All right. Terry says, hey, thanks for another great webinar, great explanations, and safety methods. So, thank you, Terry. Thanks for coming back and joining us. And uh, we hope that you'll, uh, you'll join us for the ones continuing in the future. Uh, I will say as well that our next webinar is going to be all about the legendary Para Reflector. And uh, yeah, I think that one's going to be a nice fun time for us as well. And we'll have some, some interesting stuff to, to go over and talk about. Uh, as well, I would say, you know, I can't, sta can't state it enough. If you are at all interested, please, please, please register now and lock in your spot for the Earth webinar or the Earth trainings, the masterclass live and in person. Uh, I'm going to be at the Atlanta one and, and definitely hope to, to learn myself. So uh, with that, thanks everybody again for joining us. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everybody.